2002 Chevy Cavalier. It's a no start. And what I want to do for this one is walk you guys through some directions, some quick tests that we can use to identify what's causing this condition. And the first thing that I've done is I've connected the scan tool. I'll turn the key on. And uh, we continue to get a no communication message on the scan tool. So scan tool is not going to provide us with much direction on this. Although it is a clue as to a potential problem, uh, but certainly if you guys you know do this long enough, you'll find vehicles that won't communicate and it has nothing to do with the no start condition, but we definitely want to consider this as a problem at this point. Okay, so we're looking for direction. Scan tool wasn't very helpful. So I'm gonna come under the hood and this is gonna depend on the car that you're working on, on what test you choose. You know, we're always looking for uh, the next easiest, fastest test. And so in this case, because there uh, are coil packs right here, this is a waste spark system. There's two coil packs. Um, I'm just gonna take, and this is acceptable on these GM type two coils. I'm just gonna take two plug wires off. I've shown you guys this in other videos. You can't do this on all cars. But on this one you can. With me filming and having one hand, it's helpful to be able to know systems and what you can get away with and what you can't. And on this design, uh, if this has spark, it should jump the gap between these two coil towers. Again, this is unique to GM. You don't wanna do this on all cars, but works for these. Um, go ahead and crank that for me. Okay, keep cranking. Okay, good. There is no spark coming from these towers at all. Um, granted, you could have one tower that's shorted and, and that's causing that condition, but the car's not even trying to start. And so uh, we're gonna attack this car as a no spark from this point. Okay, there's a lot of different possibilities as to what causes a no spark condition. We could have no power to the coil, we could have a crank sensor problem, cam sensor problem, some type of wiring issue. Uh, we could have a computer problem. And so, again, looking for speed, I'm gonna use this as a guide. And uh, I did this on the Honda No Start video where I mentioned checking for a check engine light that lights when you turn the key on. And some of you guys asked me why I would do that and what would happen if there wasn't one. This is gonna be a perfect example of that. So as you see right now, the key is on and there is no check engine light. The check engine light should be in this area right here. I'm gonna turn the key off. We'll turn the key back on again. And my check engine light, which should be right above this ABS light, is not lighting. So this is giving me further direction that the fact that the vehicle is not communicating and the fact that I have no check engine light when I turn the key on is a red flag that this computer system is not alive. It's not talking to us. Um, the, basically, the computer is dead at this point. And so the next step is gonna be uh, a quick verification test to see if this computer is alive and maybe I'm wrong in what I'm saying and maybe we have a burnout bulb and this is all coincidence, but next step, I'm gonna go back under the hood and I'm gonna check for a five volt reference on one of the easy sensors to get to. Okay, for this test, I have the key on right now and I'm picking the intake air temp sensor to test because it's right up top. And uh, a little bit of theory needed for these thermistor circuits would be very important to have a little knowledge on these. Um, certainly um, is helpful. But a thermistor uses a five volt reference, which is the signal and a ground. And so on any thermistor circuit, if you want to see the full five volts that the computer applies, you need to unplug the sensor. You unplug a thermistor on any thermistor, we should have five volts on one of these two wires. I already have the signal wire back probed and you see on my screen that I have 0.1 of a volt. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over just to prove to you guys there's nothing. Actually, I'll do a quick test up front. Actually, can you do that for me? Thank you. Just the black. Uh, go on the front side, turn it around, it'll be easier. Just don't oh. just don't stuff it in there because we don't want to uh, spread those pins apart. Just touch it there, good. And we got 0.07 on that wire and then touch it on the other one. Again, guys, we are just touching that. We're not stuffing that in there and spreading the female terminal apart. And the other wire, we got zero volts on that circuit. So one other thing that we want to do 
multimeter basics, you can let that go. Is you want to make sure, we didn't do this, we want to make sure our meter has a good ground. And I just touched my meter to battery positive. So anytime you have an unexpected result, you always want to make sure that that ground is good. And even though you're on the battery, you can still have a bad ground connection. And so what that verifies to me, the fact that I am reading battery voltage tells me that my test was accurate and that we in fact have no five volt reference available to our sensors and that confirms what we're talking about. No check engine light, no communication, no five volt reference. Absolutely this computer is not alive, it's not talking to us. And so what this does is gives us some speed here. Um, you might, for a no spark situation, start checking the crank sensor. You might start checking the cam sensor. You might start uh, after the ignition coils, and you would have wasted all of that time only to find out that the computer circuit was not alive in the first place. So great direction tool. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna check computer powers and grounds. We're gonna check fuses on the circuits, see what we come up with. Okay, this next part, again, we're gonna check fuses first. Computer power and ground is what we're worried about. And I really don't feel like pulling a diagram. Uh, I'd have to you know, load up my laptop and, and get up on the site. And I'm um, just, again, looking for speed. So this doesn't always work. Of course, we have to do that at times, but you know, sometimes in some manufacturers, they provide us with, uh, with good uh, descriptions on the top. So I have a PCM fuse right here I can check. And that's the second one in on this side. It's a 10 amp. And uh, what I'm gonna do, using my multimeter that's already connected, just gonna touch the tabs on the back of the fuse, and that's gonna be a good measurement. And what I wanna see on both sides of a fuse, for a good fuse, is I want to see 12 volts on both sides. If I see 12 volts on one and zero on the other, that's an indication the fuse is blown. If I see zero on both pins, and it's a computer fuse, and the key is on where we should have 12, that's not a bad fuse, but that tells you you have a main power problem, maybe an ignition switch or a fusible link that's blown. So our first measurement is gonna be on this PCM fuse right here. I'll take you up to the meter. You see I got 12 volts on this circuit. Try to get rid of the glare. 1185, battery's a little weak. I'm gonna move this to the other side of the fuse, stay focused on the meter. So what we know right there is that computer fuse is good. Now there's a few other ones that we could eyeball while we're here. And uh, we have a PCM HVAC fuse, 50 amp, and an ignition fuse. Maybe really no reason to do the battery fuses, but we can do a couple checks on those. I'm gonna focus you on here. And I'm gonna check those big fuses. These are maxi fuses, or technically they're fusible links. Uh, this is my PCM HVAC fuse that's hot on one side. Hot on the other side, that is a good fuse. This is the ignition fuse. Power on one side, power on the other, that is a good fuse. So the next thing I wanna do is check the interior fuse box, see if we have any designated fuses in there. Okay, so we have an interior fuse box we wanna check now too. And uh, nice of GM to provide a legend on their uh, fuse box, you know. Ford should take note here. Uh, it is really helpful to not just put numbers on here, but to actually tell us what they are. Maybe some of you Euro market people too. Start labeling your fuse boxes, please. Anyway, I got a PCM 10 amp fuse right here at the top that I need to check, and we're gonna do it the same way we did the other ones, check for power on both sides. And uh, I have to tell you guys that we already found our problem, and, and when I was in here and I missed the opportunity to show it to you, so I'm checking this pin, uh, that's the PCM fuse, and you see down here I have 11.9, and I move it over, check the other side, I have 11.9. What happened is I had 11.9 on one side, and when I went to check the other side, the fuse actually moved, and then my check engine light actually came on, and uh, actually what I noticed too is that fuel gauge jumped up, and my check engine light now, I'll show you where that's at, you see my light's on. So this car should start now, I'm gonna try to start it. And you see we are running. And so our problem is an issue with the fuse. And uh, I wish I would have caught that part, uh, but let's see if, if we can find out why that happened. 
before I show you the fuse, um, I want to just review one last thing, and that's this check engine light test for direction. Keys off, turn the key on, you see my check engine light is now lit, and uh, that is a great direction tool. Uh, it's not foolproof, certainly you can have a bulb that's out, but um, it, it definitely saved us some time on this car. We, we didn't um, go after crank sensor, wiring, coils. Uh, we went right after a computer problem, fortunately. Uh, it was an easy one. Um, I didn't need a wiring diagram. It was a fuse issue, um, but very, very nice direction test. Okay, so I found the issue with this fuse, and uh, it did feel a little bit loose when I tested it. Like I said, it actually moved. But if you look at this fuse, I'm hoping that, that the camera shows it, that this fuse is actually, it's not blown. Um, it, it has indications of, of uh, heat. It actually melted. And uh, what causes this to happen is resistance problems. So resistance in an unwanted location equals heat. And this was making a bad connection. I don't like the color of this pin. It's kind of gray. Uh, the other side looks a little bit better. I flip it over, and uh, you can actually see you can actually see some pit marks on this side, and you see how gray that side looks. Just to compare, I'll show you what a, a good fuse looks like. Well, actually, you can see that one's melted up there a little bit more too. So we definitely have a connection problem with this fuse. Um, this is what a a new fuse would look like, and you see this the gray color of this pin up here. I don't like it at all. Now these Cavaliers, um, and I uh, forget the other model, maybe Grand Ams on this year are known for the windshield leaking into the fuse box, and that may be an issue here, uh, that we have uh, a windshield leaking and the fuse box has some corrosion in it. Or it could be something as simple as uh, just loose connection, and when you have a loose connection, it's certainly going to uh, create resistance problems, and it's certainly going to create uh, some discoloration as uh, it's arcing in there um, over and over again. So um, I think what we need to do, uh, there's really nothing I can show you on the camera. I don't see any green corrosion on the outside of the fuse box. Um, I am going to tighten the terminals up and put a fuse in this car. And uh, we're going to take it for a drive and, and really give the car back to the customer and see what happens. If, if this problem happens again, then then uh, the suggestion is going to be to replace the fuse box and to fix the windshield leak if there is one. But uh, I really, for this video, just want to emphasize again uh, the direction that we picked using the scan tool, no communication, using the check engine light, it wasn't lit, going under the hood, seeing no 5 volt reference, uh, and of course no spark. But that led us away from the ignition system, that led us away from all the other checks that you would typically do on a no start. And it's just a very valuable test and I want you guys to adopt it. I certainly um, have these procedures in my book too to, to emphasize direction. And if you, if you got better direction, you're gonna get to where you're going a lot faster. And speed uh, is key, time is money. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that and I uh, just really thank you a lot for all your support.